Hello and welcome to the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Salma Morningstar and I have Amy Renee here with me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I met Amy Renee on social media and we connected around some womb centered healing work that we were talking about. Surprise, surprise on my end that I'd be talking about that. Um, And so, uh, and surprise, surprise that I would invite her on the podcast to come and share about her unique way of talking about womb-centered healing. So thank you for joining us, Amy. And um, I would like to invite you to introduce yourself and share a little bit about how you started to get into womb-centered healing and this framework of womb baskets that you were sharing with me about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, My name's Amy Renee Krause. And I'm a practitioner of holistic medicine and shamanic art. So basically Peruvian based came into my life. Um, During my journey, I was introduced to something called the four baskets. And for me, it has just been very helpful to uh, notice or look at this aspect of my life and how it does impact me as a human. Uh, keep in mind, I am, I don't know a whole lot about womb work, so I am sh- kind of like a newbie to your work. Um, however, this is something that I do feel just really beneficial to, to notice. So the way it came into my life was um, a class. I feel like spirit just brought this into my life. Spirit wanted me to know something. And so I said yes and just was open to it. So the first basket to look at, uh, maybe you want to see as a container, so to speak, is the moment of inception. So whatever that energy was, you know, between the male and female, the energetics of that can play into our lives. The second basket is from that moment to the entire time we are in the womb for the most part, up until the point our mother starts having contractions and it's time to come. So the energetics of what the mother came in contact with, that we can experience that throughout our lives. You know, whether it be the happiness, the sad, or just whatever was around our mother. So, and even before then, the third basket is the contractions. So when that starts and the energy all around that, whatever was taking place. So that's another aspect. And the fourth is the energetics of being birthed so say for instance um if a child is being born and the doctor pulls the child out doesn't let the child finish coming naturally they've done research and have found that it is likely that these children do not finish anything rest of their lives because they were not able to finish being born naturally and then so once we're emerged into this this new world or this world so to speak those first six hours all that comes into play during that so yeah indeed these are four very potent baskets that i work a lot with not having thought to put them in baskets <laughs> but so i'm yeah. curious you said that this awareness or this way of of thinking about these very powerful and important aspects of our lives did you say that it came to you in a class yeah so um i did take yeah it was a class that introduced me to these aspects um and the different elements that are connected to them as well okay can you share who taught the class what was the name of the class so the name of the class was four baskets and i feel that it was connected to um 
oneness, a oneness, uh, oneness teachings of sorts. Uh huh. So you don't remember the instructor or the organization that put the class on? Yeah, her name was Catherine. Um, yeah, and I don't remember a whole whole lot about rest of that. Okay, and where was it? What city? What town? Uh, yeah. So uh, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. So uh, Baldwin City, Kansas, uh, the Light Center is where this took place. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Well, it just sounds like another one of these lineages of looking at our conception, gestation, and birth, and that those hours just after birth has the fundamental um, blueprints for our lives and the energetics of it, the emotions of it, uh, of those experiences can become these blueprints. Did they talk a little anything about in the class about how we can go back and rewrite those blueprints at all? Yeah, so definitely uh, for me, what else has come up? This feels really, this is another piece that felt really important to share. So as I was doing inner child work, guidance to connect to my womb self also came into play. So by us just connecting into the stories or say for instance if we're able to connect with our mother about our mother's experience of what was it like you know for our mom for for that first connection you know that spark of life um you know for me uh my mother had two miscarriages before before i came so it was from a marriage of love and so just by knowing like that, that first spark of love, like I was created, I was wanted from love versus someone who may not be and how that can just really impact us as, as a human being in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wanted. So knowing that that energy, like that's almost a foundational aspect of my life, I feel also connecting for me by connecting to my womb self so to speak i've been able to do a lot of inner work and a lot of inner healing so my father was in the navy and he had leave he had duty um when i was in the womb of my mother so he returned uh during that time i was meant to be born well, I didn't come out. I was a month, I was born a month later than expected. So my father, even though he was home for a month, I came just a little bit after he had a return to the ship. So knowing that the relationship I have with my father semi has to do with that experience of, you know, my mother and what she experienced you know maybe there was some energetics what i made up at the time anyway was that i didn't really know my dad like he left you know it was almost like um in a sense abandonment issues i feel came from that so by just connecting and doing forgiveness work with that i have been able to create and write a new story so bringing that awareness to others how we can go in talk with the womb self do that deep inner work to allow for a new reality a new story a new relationship to be created or even the birthing process you know um that aspect i know some some people are born c-section now maybe it's just that ease and flow of just being not have to go through the pain of life and i'm sure you may have a lot to add to this actually so just a way a deeper connection getting to know the womb self um a process that i that's come through is say for instance i had a time where i had an ex-boyfriend and he got in a really bad motorcycle accident. 
part of me felt called. I want to go and be there, be at the hospital and let him know, you know, I'm there if he needs anything. And that, another aspect of me was like, no way, like, don't even go near this person. So by connecting to what I'm going to call my inner family, so the womb self, my child self, my adult self, the teenager self, adult self, higher, wiser self, I gained so much clarity of the womb for me is like just this pure energy. What energy is, is connected to this person? The same with the child. And so I gained clarity by checking in with each of these pieces. So just bringing awareness to people that, hey, if you're ever confused, you don't know what to do. Checking in with the womb is a great way to find out, get clarity, along with the other aspects of the inner family. I'm curious what clarity you received in that particular situation where you, you felt this one voice telling you to go be with him in the hospital and this other voice telling you to stay away. Did you ever figure out where those two voices were coming from and find a way to reconcile those opposing impulses in your response to yeah. the circumstance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I checked in with my womb self, energetically, like that was a no, it was a strong no, like that energy. And it's interesting because that relationship I had with him, I didn't realize this at the time, but my stomach would hurt a lot. He was a very angry person. And so I am now aware through doing my inner work that that, that was part of it. So my, my womb self was like, no way. The child self, that's who wanted to see this person. That's the part of me that was like loving and caring. I just want this person to know I am their friend. I'm your friend still. I want to be your friend. I'm here if you need me. My teenage self, no, don't go there. My adult self was who was kind of confused of what to do. Like, part of me feels like yes, and part of me feels like no. So checking in to the higher, wiser self, there's a reason why I was called to no longer be in a partnership with this person. There's a reason. I had to do a lot of inner work and healing to, to clear that, to that connection, that, you know, love, sending it love. Anytime he became present in my thoughts or even, it's not so much now, but at first, like a lot, it was just, I send love. Thank you, spirit, for bringing this person into my life for soul growth, for allowing me to do my inner work around this and allow me to do inner healing with my womb. And so that piece of anger, that also, so anytime, for me, anytime I feel my stomach, you know, tighten up or just not feeling good, to me, that's a sign that that is my womb work. There's something that has happened or that chakra area too, for me to listen to find out what it needs, what it wants, what the story is. That way I can reparent or create a new story for myself. And it's a ripple effect. It affects everyone around me. And I almost feel like by me doing my inner work, that is affecting my children too. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And so, um, yeah, you know, you're just, you're talking about, uh, all of these uh, womb healing processes that we work with a lot in the womb centered healing temple, um, you know, ha having wisdom, finding wisdom within ourselves about the confusing dynamics that can come up in romantic relationships mm. and finding that clear yes or that clear no um, in the midst of confusing messages from our, all of our different selves. So I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to find the clarity for yourself in this situation. I'm curious if you um, discovered any 
connections to that with your experience of your dad leaving right before you were born and that abandonment and those feelings it might not have been connected to that particular boyfriend situation but perhaps other places other stories in your life of recognizing that oh wait a second I don't need to respond with the same energy signature as came up for my mom and for me perhaps when my dad had to leave before I actually arrived and any residual blueprint that that situation created. Um, have, you, have you discovered that influencing other circumstances in your life and, and how did you um, bring that forgiveness work you know right into the into your ability to approach situations in a new way that's not mm. um, beholden to that pattern right so what came up for me is um so that first story of you know maybe i was mad at my dad for for leaving you know i was abandoned you know he went to make money so in a way i've actually had to do money like a relationship with money work because I feel like maybe I was pushing that away because I was blaming my father and that aspect for that so by healing that and creating a new story of like you know dad I know you weren't trying to hurt me thank you for providing for our family you know my mother thank you for doing what you could for us. Um, and for me, I'm inspired now. Like, I know that's the, that's the way the majority, you know, life kind of taught us is you go out and you work, but it doesn't have to be that way, you know, by connecting to our truth inside and having that clear connection with our womb, with spirit, listening to our soul's you know what fills our soul like we can actually merge the two worlds like i love what you're doing you know it is it's of service to life in a huge huge way and also allowing for the i'm going to call it the spirit of money to be with us side by side versus doing what society teaches us oh you have to have a job to make money Mm -hmm. So it's been a beautiful healing process in my life to, to develop a relationship with the spirit of money, to develop a relationship, a healthy relationship with my father and that healing and a new story with that. Um, so what does that look like practically speaking? Because we still do live in a society where if, so if suddenly, um, you know, if we didn't have money, we wouldn't necessarily be able to get all of our materials needs met. And we're, right. there are some people in some communities that are um, trying to explore different ways than that. And there are some people in um, in communities that 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 other ways besides the commodification of our of our um, survival needs are still intact from indigenous cultures and that there's more of a gifting type economy that's still intact that hasn't been completely commodified and many people are are attempting to um reestablish that or build something new where it's where money can just return to its origins of being a simple way of making sure that everyone has what they need in the community and, and away from this hoarding of wealth and greed that, mm. that is taking place um, in members of the society who have been taught and for generations and felt for generations that having more wealth than everyone else is what makes them safe and secure and um, is their whole purpose in life to the point of, of completely exploiting uh, their fellow human beings and the planet and all of this um, to a degree that's detrimental to everyone, including them, and not being able to wake up to that. So here we are in this system deeply entrenched in that exploitation 
and and uh, many people are saying, wait a second, you know, we could have a different relationship with money. We could have a different relationship with each other, with the planet. So I'm curious what that looks like for you in your life. What changes have you made? Um, what creative solutions are you coming up with for this, you know, for, uh, for all of us to benefit from your creativity yeah. <laughs> as we're growing into and evolving as a species? Right. So... For me, I'll just, I'll kind of share a little bit of uh, my background is I dealt at a casino. I dealt poker for 15 years of my life before I had what I'm going to call like that first awakening stage within myself and started doing the inner work. When spirit, like when I had an awareness that there was more to life than what I was taught and I knew spirit was there working with me, I dove right in. It was like, phew, what I gained from, from this new relationship was that there's a balance there. It's important to have that balance. So it doesn't mean just a, you know, quit what you're doing and it's going to be all handy dandy. It is working with and creating the new. Mm. So for me, a big, um, how do I want to put this? Um, I do like to be in right relation with the earth. I do feel that our earth mother is, is something that we really do need to care about. Um, everything's energy. Everything's consciousness to me. It's alive, right? It's frequency. So everything has a vibration, a frequency. It's its own energy. So to really be connecting with what's filling soul fulfilling and at the same time setting the intentions okay spirit show me the way what is the next step when those sparks come up so i'm gonna just connect to the spark right now so that initial spark whatever it be us you know creation that is something to really acknowledge and be aware of so for me, I have, when those sparks have shown up, yes, I know that's important. So in a way, incubating them, nurturing them, filling them with love, it's not so much me having to do anything. It's more like spirit is bringing it to me. It's showing up for me. And all I have to do is follow that guidance and say, yes. So by setting the intention, okay, if I can have the best of both worlds for me, so it started, um, real, I'm going to say really doing, doing a little bit of both. So I was called to return to the casino for a little bit because it gave me that, I felt, I guess, financial sta stability because that's important too. Because if we don't have that, then it's like, you know, we feel tight, we feel squeezed, like it's not there well, that energy is going to impact us. We're not going to be able to, for me, I didn't feel like I could fully be my highest self if I felt, you know, like I didn't have that there. So that allowed me to say yes to what spirit was bringing into my life. So there's a sacred geometry master building. So the knowledge that they needed to know back in the day to build Stonehenge and the ancient sites, you know, Spirit had guided me to apply sacred geometry to the gardens, and I didn't know how to do that. Well, those things started showing up for me. Okay, this, this course came into my life, and I knew it was a yes, you know. How it was going to happen, I had no idea. This is like an $8,000 course. At the time, I did not have a job when this aspect came in. I'm like, okay, spirit, I fully said yes, yes to this, okay? If this is meant to be, show me how. And by continuing to do that, it's happening. So whether it be my shamanic work, whether it be the sacred geometry work, um, I have something new and exciting that's in the creation as well, similar to what you're doing, podcast aspect, but in a different kind of way. 
So incubating that until it does feel safe. So how I'm fully serving, like, I am fully, fully serving with that connection by connecting to the womb all the aspects of my being and trusting and showing and doing the inner work. And um, for me, a big aspect of the money and creating a new, new story is, okay, if all of the light workers, of all these people that have this ancient wisdom, if all, all the abundance was, was with us, what would we do with it? Like for me, I feel like we could really make a huge impact on the world. Yes. I honor our ancestors and how they lived in a sense without paper money or any of that. However, we are in a world right now where it does, it can plant our reality. So for me, having a, a loving relationship, healing, like sending love energy to that, okay, spirit of source, like, what do you want me to do with this? I am able to create a bigger impact in life for the betterment of life. So whether it's, you know, cleaning up the waters or cleaning up, you know, the forest, doing what I can as a human being by this clear connection, the source connection, this sharing the wisdom of the womb, sharing the wisdom of how our inner child work, you know, affects our daily lives for the betterment of, of all of it. Wow, I just want to appreciate your your passion and um, this these sparks of inspiration that that you speak of. It seems to me like there's a beautiful correlation between what you talked about uh, your first basket being filled with, which was this um, great loving desire for you to come into the world that your that your parents had, and this big yes that you're able to say to these new sparks of inspiration even though the path may not be clear how you might mm -hmm. get to the you know be able to come into fruition with each of these inspirations and and um and it feels very uh it feels very fundamental to how any of these um inspirations or creations might come to fruition this continued working with these womb baskets if you will and all of the richness that's in there um, because you know my I know my my mother my grandfather was in the navy as well and was away while my mother was um, being gestated I don't know exactly if he was going in she was born, um, but that even though uh, she was, uh, you know, she was a wanted pregnancy, that, were you the first of children in your family? Yeah. Yes. That, um, being the first and of a young mother, my grandmother was 16 years old, um, being the first and not having the father's presence there can can often be a source of a gr good deal of stress and worry and like, wow, how is this all going to happen? And mm -hmm. stress gets translated to the, the child. And so it, it really, and it gets embedded in the DNA of mm -hmm. whoever is gestating in that womb. And then that pattern gets played out um, over and over again in our lives. And as we become aware of that blueprint and how it affects us, then we start having the opportunity to go through the transformations that you're talking about of saying, okay, here's this blueprint of around money, right? Do I want to stay uh, working at a casino my whole life? Or is there other options, other things I want to create? And yeah. having to and having that full on yes at the beginning of these things and then this uncertainty of how it will unfold and how each of these things will weave together and just coming to the point of asking for guidance from within from that inner wise woman self that you speak of and and I also want to um 
give you a little bit more as a guest here on the on the show uh, about some of the sourcing of and it sounds like you're talking about it a little bit but but not really articulating it exactly this way of that the source of some of our wisdom and guidance can come directly from the womb from mm -hmm. these you know from these memories of past ages of ourselves from our ancestors from our our future self our inner wise one that that has been through everything directly from our spirit and our divine um self uh, can come directly all of that can come directly from the womb but also from mother earth and what mother earth needs we open our womb energy to receive the wisdom directly from mother earth and also directly from the cosmic womb uh the source of all life mm. in the universe so ev all as we continue to reorient towards what truly nourishes life and the biology of the womb giving us a blueprint of how life is created ideally you know we know what you know through science and observing what works for gestation um you know conception gestation and birth that biology what happens in that process is a wonderful um symbology of how creation and change actually can take place. And you spoke about that a little bit in what you were sharing of, of how you were gestating these ideas. You'd have the spark of inspiration, the 100% yes, and then not know what's happening. You know, that when that conception happens, that, that tiny little um, developing um, person is in the dark and the mother you know maybe she has a sense of this new energy this new being growing inside of her but it's all happening in the dark without her having to do anything and so that process of birth in these four baskets um give us a a, a, a blueprint of how we can create something new and when we look at the an, an idealized version of how you know gestation conception gestation and birth could happen if everything went really well and i often talk about and i write about and and encourage people to consider um what what it would look like what it would feel like if that gestation happened with you know mutually orgasmic parents who are really welcoming this soul into their lives and uh, that's a big question because many women throughout throughout our recent history have been not orgasmic upon conceiving the child for one reason or another um, and that was considered perfectly normal you know a perfectly happy loving union could be happening without the woman having orgasm during sex mm because that was considered normal for for many so many generations and so um what what if our conception were was and the conception of whatever we're wanting to create now if that basket held a mutually orgasmic partnership um that wasn't laced by this whole domination of the masculine over the feminine but that was a fully recognized an appreciation of um the masculine and feminine energies coming together to create something together in partnership in, with mutual pleasure and enjoyment and then that burst of new life and with the mother being fully revered and supported and uh, physically emotionally and spiritually and mm -hmm. held in a way that she feels totally comfortable and relaxed and not afraid about how her basic needs are going to be met or anything like that and fully supported on all levels and if as we imagine that and what starts what would happen physiologically it starts to happen in us physiologically even if it didn't happen for us back when we were in our mother's womb just imagining that and imagining that for ourselves it starts to change our dna it starts to change our physiology our nervous system 
uh, this program. And so then we can continue to imagine that, what would it be like if, if uh, our mother was fully supported when we were born and didn't have invasive medical interventions and she was in optimum health and she had all the nourishment she needed and her birth was an orgasmic produce, producing blossoming of life through her body and got to hold us immediately and, and put us directly to the bra breast and ha be in this, you know, these first hours or the first hour after birth is called the golden hour. And it's depicted with halos around the mother and baby's head. It's funny because I have this beautiful halo, red halo. <laughs> And so, you know, that was something that was missing for me in my birth experience personally. And so I like to imagine uh, that golden hour happening between my mother and I, which sets up a whole system of relating to the world uh, that, that all my needs will be met and I don't have to worry, I don't have to be afraid. And that sets up a, a way of being in the body that's and in the emotions and in the spirit. And, and then we can carry on that imagination as we go of what that might look like and allow mm -hmm. that, that, um, that imagery, that um, allow that wisdom to flow through us and help to shift those patterns in our being. And so we can receive that blueprint, that original blueprint of how we were designed to create new life from Mother Earth, it's in Mother Earth's um, energy field. She can feed that to us. And from the cosmic womb, she can feed that. I mean, the cosmic womb births planets and, you know, <laughs> solar right. systems and galaxies. And Amazing. And it's through this whole, this same process, this burst of ecstatic union between um, moving energies and, and partnership. And um, so, this is part of the work that I do with the biomystical womb healing work is revisioning and revisiting and rewriting these blueprints. So I'm so glad that you have been um, initiated into that and these approaches in your own way and that more and more people are are coming forward with ways of looking at this to reflect on this and make such impactful uh, help people make such impactful changes in their lives so i fully support and celebrate you on your journey um, to transform your life your relationship with money and livelihood i think many people many listeners are really reflecting on this right now so it's a really appropriate conversation mm. and this this idea that we don't have to just like you know abandon everything and then be um be feel unsupported and unable to move forward you know mm -hmm. many stories of people say they just wanted to quit their job once they started mm. to to realize what they really wanted to do instead, but then realize that they had to go back to that job and take a more gradual approach. Otherwise, they were just going to be contracted in fear and not have the financial or you know social resources they needed to nurture the the their growth into a new place. And that's certainly been the case for me. Um, in fact, I'll just share to to sort of come to a close. Um, one of my big teachers in life was my massage teacher, Judy Phillips, and she she would tell me, you know, you're not going to, you probably won't start doing your real life's work until you're 50. Everything before then is preparation. Mm -hmm. And so um, that has really been true for me. And it's really funny. I keep telling people all the time, I'm turning 50 this year. And with this, um, with this global pandemic, the work that I was doing, that I was wondering when it would be done so I could focus just on my life's work, which is creating this biomystical womb healing modality and, and you know, putting it out there and putting the book out there and all these things that I was sort of doing part time while I was on the side of the thing that was actually bringing in my livelihood. <laughs> therapy I still love massage therapy but you know physically it, it, it has an ex expiration date well lo and behold 
uh, here we are in the pandemic and I can't do massage therapy anymore. So what am I doing? <laughs> Writing my book. And the ah. <laughs> year I'm turning 50, I have to mm -hmm. of the other things I was doing and write my book. And my husband happens to be able to stay working and, and support me in that, you know, because he works in healthcare and it's all just lined up perfectly. And so, you know, all the years of worrying, will I ever be able to really do what lights me up, yeah. you know, was really supported by Judy Phillips telling me back in my 20s, in my mid-20s, mm. you know, your, everything is just preparation until you get to your real work at 50, you know, and so that to me was like, oh, wow, okay, I can, I can let myself off the hook. It's not like I'm wasting my life by doing all these different things that I've done throughout my life. That what none of them was a waste. Everything was part of my healing process, or you know, part of some kind of preparation that is just this mysterious recipe that um, that you know we don't even get to see the recipe necessarily. <laughs> It, we just can't remember it right <laughs> I don't know anyway so anyway well listen uh, Amy it was lovely to talk with you if, if folks want to talk to you about um, about the four baskets or um, anything else that you've talked about how can they get in touch with you yeah so um, you know what I have an email I have a Facebook uh, page so you can find me on Facebook Amy Renee Krauts um, K-R-A-U-S is how you spell my last name. Um, also, LadyAmyVernay at gmail.com. So I am happy to connect with those who fill the call. And okay. I just, I want to honor you and thank you. You know, you spoke of the, the earth and the womb aspect of that and the cosmic, like, that's it. It is bringing, it's working with all, all of that. So Thank you so much for, for your journey. And that's it. It's, it is, it. it's the journey. It is, it's part of it. So Thank bless you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Renee and, and listeners who um, might not know, uh, you can always come if you want to talk with, with me, Sama, a little bit more about any of the projects I've been talking about, about the biomystical womb uh, apprenticeship program or the biomystical womb oracle card deck which is now mm. available to be funded through a kickstarter campaign you can visit wombcenteredhealing.com and find out all about all of that and you can reach out to me there if you have any questions and um meanwhile many blessings for all mm. and may we all fill our womb baskets with beautiful dreams mm. of being reborn together in a new world of harmony and partnership between ourselves, each other, and the planet. And so thank you once again for joining me. That's all for now. Until next time.